welcome to the World Cup Project. My name is Carrie Gill. I'm a vegan registered dietitian. It's very fun to say, it's obviously new. Um, and I'm kicking things off again with a series looking at the macro and micronutrients you want to be mindful of if you um, are doing the low FODMAP diet for IBS and you also follow a plant based, vegan y, vegetarian diet. So, first things we're going to do is iron. There is an accompanying blog post on my website, which I'll link below, that has references in. Um, and I'll put some timestamps so you can skip through this video to the bit of information you want. Um, but yeah, let's get cracking. So why do you need iron? Well, as you probably know, it's a metal that your body uses in your red blood cells on a, a heme structure um, that carries oxygen from your lungs around to your body for where you need it. And if you lose a lot of blood or you don't eat enough for a long period of time, you could become deficient in iron, you'll get very fatigued and you'll probably have other health issues. So it's really important to make sure that you are getting enough through your diet. The amount of iron you need actually really varies depending on what's happening with your body because generally speaking your body holds on to iron really really well. It's estimated you lose around one milligram per day just from like the sloughing off the skin um, in your gut as well in your urinary tract. Um, but if you are kind of menstruating or you've had a baby or you're breastfeeding or you had some kind of traumatic accident where you lost a lot of blood, yeah, you're losing a lot more so that you have to replenish. Um, and also if you're just consistently not eating enough to maintain your normal requirements. Looking at the NHS guidance, um, I'll just read it out. Women, um, and they're kind of, I think they're assuming that these are women who are menstruating regularly, um, ages 15, 19 to 50, need about 14.8 milligrams per day. Women who are postmenopausal, and they've just said 50 years approximately, need 8.7 milligrams per day. And men who are 18 or older need about 8.7 milligrams per day. But it's worth noting that these requirements you see are dietary requirements and the amount you actually absorb is much, much lower, um, or that you need to absorb, I should say. So looking to the World Health Organization, they say that people who are menstruating, they need around 2.38 um, milligrams per day. And then men, oh sorry, women who are postmenopausal, they'll need 0.96 milligrams. And then men who are older than 18 will need 1.82. I'm not sure why that's so different. Um, but that is to say that you actually need a very small amount of iron absorbed per day. And it's the absorption that actually really matters. And I feel like it's very hard to escape the debate around non-heme versus heme iron on the internet if you follow, I don't know, between people who eat meat and people who don't. And it's kind of really besides the point because everyone eats non-heme iron. It's a really important source of iron. It's just less, relatively less bioavailable than heme iron. But for all the different foods that contain iron um, that's in the non-heme form, so not attached to that heme protein like it is in your blood, you'll absorb between two and 20% of it. And then for heme iron, so that's in animal products such as um, say like dairy and meats, then you'll be absorbing 15 to 35. So you could eat an animal based product that you absorb less iron of than a plant based one. And when it comes to non-heme iron, it's really affected by other foods that you're eating. So the polyphenols in black tea, and it really, really hurts my, my little British heart to say it, um, really reduce the amount of iron that you absorb from your meal. So having a cup of black tea with your meal or afterwards can stop your body from being able to absorb as much of that iron. And then also phytic acid that you'll find in some grains and legumes, um, they also can block that iron from being absorbed. However, when it comes to phytic acid, that's very much reduced if you boil and cook it, which is, um, I don't know about you, that's the only way I've ever eaten beans. And certainly for low FODMAP portions, they're almost all exclusively canned anyway. So those definitely have been boiled and soaked to like a lot. So that's something we don't have to worry quite as much about. Fortunately, while there are chemicals and foods that can stop you absorbing iron as well, there are ones which can help. So vitamin C or ascorbic acid can really increase the bioavailability of non-heme iron. And actually, not only does vitamin C increase your absorption of iron, it can counter the effects of the phytic acid and the uh, polyphenols in tea. So the top tip is making sure that if you are having iron rich foods and maybe you do want a black tea, then you can also add a low FODMAP source of vitamin C, such as um, a low FODMAP serving of tomatoes, of a capsicum or bell pepper, 
um, of obviously a squeeze of lemon or lime and you'll notice a lot of recipes on this channel my website they include that because it tastes good it helps with the you know the general balance and feeling of the meal but it also means you get more nutrients out of it and the other thing that can really help is the vitamin c in leafy greens which in themselves are also a good source of iron so i think that's that's why in the meal maker guide which i'll link below that you can get for free on my website it always includes it adding a leafy green to your meal because it means you're definitely getting a source of iron and it has the vitamin c in as well to help you absorb it from those and the other ingredients now I'm going to run through a list of things that are low FODMAP, or there are low FODMAP portions of, that you can have, um, which are good sources of iron. And just making sure that you're getting at least, you know, one or two of these in every meal means that over the course of a day, if you're eating enough, then you're getting enough iron. So these are serving suggestions of 100 grams, um, but obviously I'll double check the Monash FODMAP app for the latest up-to-date low FODMAP portion. But in a block of 100 grams of firm tofu, there's 1.2 milligrams. In 100 grams of tempeh, there's 1.2 milligrams. In 100 grams of canned um, lentils, there's 1.3 milligrams of iron. In 100 grams of canned chickpeas, there's 1.3. In sesame seeds, there's 10.4, but obviously you just be having a teaspoon or a tablespoon. Um, there's 6.4 in sunflower seeds. There's three milligrams in 100 grams of Brazil nuts. There's 3.2 milligrams in hazelnuts there's 2.3 milligrams in edamame and there's 1.5 in quinoa but I think you can see that just listing those out those are kind of classic staple foods that a lot of people like you'd be eating anyway so just making sure that you're having that rich protein source so having the nuts and seeds having the things like the tope the tempeh the nuts legumes even if they're low format portions over the course of day if those are the main constituents of your meals you're going to get enough iron and I think when it comes to daily requirements it's important to keep in mind that we're talking about the average over many days so it's not like you have to meet your requirement every single day otherwise you'll become deficient you can have a little bit less one day but then you have more the next and it's more about that accumulation of building up stores over time so yeah if you're eating enough food generally speaking um, you shouldn't need to ever take an iron supplement um, personally since going vegan many years ago, I have been doing those Thrive of Blood tests just because I'm really curious to make sure that I am getting enough of my diet and it just feels reassuring to know. Um, so there might be an issue if you didn't already have good stores of iron and then you restrict your diet, the low FODMAP diet, and you end up doing it for months and months and months and months rather than the kind of set period elimination, re-challenge, reintroduce that you should do. And then you end up having this very restricted diet on top of maybe you already had depleted stores already and then you can get fatigued and deficient and that would be an issue. So if you're unsure, I'd recommend um, seeing a dietitian um, or just double checking your meals, maybe tracking it for a bit. You could also do um, a blood test just to double check that you are getting everything you need. But yeah, I'd be interested to know if you have been keeping an eye on how much iron you get in your diet. Um, and I hope this was useful and it's nice to be back and what else? I'll be doing more on other nutrients such as protein, we'll do ones on calcium, omega-3. Yeah, if there's anything else in this nutrition series you want me to cover, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, it's nice to be back and I hope you're all well. See you in the next one.